Okay, so welcome once again with this another video lesson. So this is actually a continuation of our lesson last time, talking about laws of exponents. So this time, we're going to discuss the remaining um, laws of exponents, particularly on the zero exponent and negative exponents. Okay, so without further ado, let's have more about this one okay so let's start with the zero rule or the zero exponent so we have the definition that any number raised to zero is equal to one so that in symbol we have here that a raised to zero so that is equal to one so always take note of that so to understand better let's have examples Okay, so example number one. So this one, you have two. So two here is raised to zero. So by rule, we have our answer as one. Okay, so next, how about if a variable is raised to zero? So again, by rule, you have here. So our m here is raised to zero. So automatically, our answer is equal to 1. Okay, next. Number 3. So you have here two variables and each variable has an exponent of 0. So we have R raised to 0 and then S here is raised to 0. So again, by rule, you have to simplify that R raised to 0 here will be equal to 1. And S also here will become, or it will be equal to 0. And that we have our answer as 1 times 1. So what is 1 times 1? So our answer is still equal to 1. Okay, next. So how about this one? So you have now 5, then R raised to 0. So take note class that for... Um, 0 here is for variable r only. So 5 is not included. So take note of that. So for the exponent 0 is for r only. So 5 is not included. So what are we going to do is just to copy. You know? So we're just, going, going, we're just going to copy 5 here. So write it here. And then simplify r raised to 0. Then, which is by rule, you have it as 1. So, simplify further, multiply 5 times 1, so that is equal to 5. Okay, next. So, number 5. So, again, you have 10x raised to 0 divided by 2y raised to 0. So, same with number 4. So, take note that for... Um, 0 here is for variable x only. So, 10 is not included. Same with the denominator. We have 2y raised to 0. So, 0 is for y. Na, and you have 2 as, or it is not included. So, we have now our answer. So, just copy 10 here. Then simplify x raised to 0, which is equal to 1. And then copy 2. Then simplify y raised to 0, so that is equal to 1. Then multiply, so you have now 10 times 1, that is equal to 10. And then for 2 times 1, that is equal to 2. So for our answer here, we need to double check. Now always double check your answer, and of course, always simplify your answer. So in this case, we can simplify this, that which is... 10 divided by 2, so our final answer should be equal to 5. Okay, next. So for number 6, you have here 10, oh I'm sorry, 18, x raised to 5, and y raised to 0, divided by 6, x raised to 3, and y, uh, z raised to 0. So in this case class, so again, for 0, it is only applicable for y variable. 
and for our denominator, 0 is for variable z. Okay, so as you can see, we have here x raised to 5 and x raised to 0. From our previous discussion, it is by quotient rule, same variable or same letter, so we can simplify. So how? We're just going to subtract their exponent. And that is, we're going to simplify that, we have it like this. So you have now, or just copy 18, then copy x, then subtract the exponents. So you have here 5 minus 3. Okay? Then simplify y raised to 0 here, that becomes 1. And then for our denominator, you have now to copy 6. And then x raised to 3 here, mawawala na yan, because we're going, we wrote it here, okay, by quotient rule. And then z raised to 0, so that is equal to 1. So simplify further, so we have now copy 18. So as you can see, we have, we'll be having our answer like this. So 18, copy, just copy then copy variable x and subtract the exponents. So 5 minus 3, so that is equal to 2. And then to be divided by 6 times 1, so that is equal to 6. Okay. So take note that for 18 and 6 here can still be simplified. So we're going to divide. So 18 divided by 6, so that is equal to 3. And then copy variable x squared. And that becomes our final answer as 3x squared. Okay, so that is all about zero rule or zero exponent. We're going to talk about the negative exponents. So how are we going to simplify expressions having negative exponents? So in symbol class, we have here that a raised to negative 1 is equal to 1 over a. So, to understand further, let's have some examples. So, number 1, you have here x raised to negative 3. So, the exponent of our variable x here is negative. So, we are going to make it positive. So, simply, okay, we have it as 1 and then place our x raised to negative 3 in the denominator to make it positive. So you have now 1 over x raised to positive 3. Okay, next, how about this one? So example number 2, m raised to negative 4 and n raised to positive 6. So you have two variables, but take note that only variable m that has a negative exponent. So for n raised to 6, that's already positive. So we're just going to remain or place our n raised to 6 um, in the same position, the numerator. Okay, so we have it like this. So we have now n raised to 6, and then place the one or place the variable with the negative exponent on the denominator. So you have now m raised to 4. Okay. So, this will be our final answer. Next, for number 3, you have 3 variables. So, you have p raised to negative 9, q raised to 7, r raised to negative 3. So, again, there are 2 variables that have negative exponents. So, we need to simplify it. No? So, we're just going to have now our answer as q raised to 7, so this is already positive, so that remains in the numerator. And then for p raised to negative 9 and r raised to negative 3, to make that positive, we're going to place it in the denominator. So that becomes now p raised to 9 and r raised to positive 3. So this will be our final answer. Next, for number 4, you have here x raised to negative 7, y raised to positive 8 over by x raised to negative 3 and y raised to negative 4. So in this case class, since we have same variables in the numerator and denominator, so we're going to apply once again the quotient rule. Okay, so we're just going to copy the, the, the variable. So we have x 
and then subtract their exponents. So you have negative 7 minus copy negative 3. So same with the second variable. So copy y and then 8 minus negative 4. Okay, so this will uh, how it look like it looks like. So simplify further. So we have now copy x here. Okay, so that becomes now negative 7 plus 3. So y, because negative here times negative, that becomes positive. Okay, so same with y. So you have now 8 negative times negative, that is positive. Okay, so you have now y raised to 8 plus 4. So simplify more of their exponents. So you have now x raised to negative 4. So because negative 4 plus 3, so unlike signs, we're going to subtract. So 7 minus 3, so that is 4. And then copy the sign with the highest number, so which is negative. So that is why we have it as x raised to negative 4. So for y, they're both positive, so simply add. So you have 8 plus 4, so that is equal to 12. Okay, so we can uh, we can still say that x raised to negative 4, y raised to 12 is our final answer because variable x here has a negative exponent. So again, so our final answer should be okay, place y raised to 12 in the numerator and then for x raised to negative 4 in the denominator to make it positive. So the final answer for this expression is y raised to 12 over x raised to 4. Okay, number 5. This is our last example for negative exponent. So m raised to negative 9 and m raised to 4. So again, by quotient rule, they are the same. So we're going to copy variable m and subtract their exponents. So you have now negative 9 minus positive 4. So we have our answer will be m raised to negative 13 because negative 9 minus 4, they are like signs. So add the numbers and copy the sign. So 9 plus 4 is equal to 13, then copy negative sign. So since, this, uh, since our final answer is a negative exponent, so we must or we should make it uh, a positive exponent. So simply have it as 1 over m raised to positive 13. Okay, so that is all about zero and negative exponent. So I hope that you learned something for today's video lesson. And and see you in the next video lesson. By this time, thank you.